I know many of you may have had personal experiences with dairy, and I'll talk about lactose intolerance, A1 versus A2, raw versus pasteurized later in this podcast, and help you troubleshoot some of that if you haven't been able to include dairy in your life. But I wanted to lead into that with a discussion of the literature and support for the notion that milk is a healthy thing for humans in the diet. This is an interesting study to start with. The title is Dietary Fats, Carbohydrate, and the Progression of Coronary Atherosclerosis in Postmenopausal Women. I say it's interesting because the author is Darius Mazafarian, someone who has spoken about seed oils and claimed that they're beneficial for humans. So some of his research I would agree with and other of his research I would say is a little misguided, but at least in this article, I think they came to reasonable conclusions. And interestingly, in this article, they defend saturated fat in the context of cardiovascular disease, something that I've spoken about many times in the past. So this is observational research, but they did look at the coronary arteries with coronary angiography. This is when you look at the coronaries under an X-ray with a radio-opaque dye injected in them. They had 235 postmenopausal women with coronary artery disease, and they had a mean follow-up of 3.1 years. Their assessment of coronary artery disease progression was with something that's pretty good, actually looking at the inside of the coronary arteries with coronary angiography, again, over 3.1 years in 235 women. And the conclusion is very striking from a lot of reasons, from a dairy perspective and from a saturated fat perspective, because saturated fat in milk is perhaps one of the reasons that milk is vilified, if you believe that saturated fat is bad for humans. But they say in postmenopausal women with relatively low total fat intake, a greater saturated fat intake is associated with less progression of coronary atherosclerosis, whereas carbohydrate intake predominantly, and I'm editorializing here in the form of grains, if you read the study, was associated with a greater progression of coronary atherosclerosis. And if you read the study, what you'll find is that the women who had more dairy, which is a good source of saturated fat, had less progression of cardiovascular disease in their 3.1 year follow-up. So that's interesting because many would make the case that because saturated fat raises your LDL cholesterol, something I've spoken about on previous podcasts, that that is going to lead to an increased progression of cardiovascular disease. But at least in this study, what they found was that the women who are eating more of traditional carbohydrates, grains, rice, oats, wheat, those sorts of things, had increased progression of cardiovascular disease. Again, this is an observational study, so we can't draw causative inference. But in this study, it's pretty hard to suggest that saturated fat would in any way, shape, or form worsen, or there's certainly no association with worsening of cardiovascular disease, and yet that is specifically something that is often vilified very strongly in that context. There are many studies which echo these findings, but I will just mention a few others. Here's another study, the relationship between high-fat dairy consumption and obesity, cardiovascular, and metabolic disease from 2012. Again, this is observational evidence. They looked at multiple studies, and they said the observational evidence does not support the hypothesis that dairy fat or high-fat dairy foods contribute to obesity or cardiometabolic risk and suggests that high-fat dairy consumption within typical dietary patterns is inversely associated with obesity, which means the more high-fat dairy, a presumably high-calorie food, high in saturated fat, there was a lower risk of obesity. Again, this is observational, but this flies in the face of many of the conventional nutritional ideas. Although not conclusive, these findings may provide rationale for future research into the bioactive properties of dairy fat and the impact of bovine feeding practices on the health effects of dairy fat. So I would argue, as many would in this space, because there's a significant amount of literature here, that dairy fat is very beneficial for humans. Another study looking at milk fat and biomarkers of milk fat. The study title is Biomarkers of Milk Fat and the Risk of Myocardial Infarction. It's a fancy word for heart attack. In men and women, this was a case control study, which is a type of observational study done in Sweden. It's a large population-based cohort in Sweden. It had 444 cases and 556 controls 
The conclusions were milk fat biomarkers, specifically things like trans palmitoleic acid and others, were associated with a lower risk of developing your first heart attack, especially in women. This was partly confirmed in the analysis of fermented milk and cheese intake. So in this study, markers suggesting people were consuming more milk fat were associated with less of a risk of heart attack. But how can that be when we're consistently told that saturated fat, just like the kind you find in milk or butter, this is also a metric for butter consumption, is a negative thing for humans? Well, as you all know, if you follow any of my work, I don't believe that's the case at all. Another study, dairy consumption and patterns of mortality. So this is overall death in Australian adults. This is a follow-up of 14.4 years. They looked at 1,529 adult Australians aged 25 to 78. It's observational epidemiology. Overall intake of dairy products was not associated with mortality. A possible beneficial, we keep seeing that, association between intake of full-fat dairy and cardiovascular mortality needs further assessment and confirmation. So if you're looking to make the case that saturated fat from dairy or butter, which is obviously dairy, is leading to heart attacks, there's a lot of evidence to the contrary and even evidence to suggest that this is protective for humans. So earlier in this podcast, I asked this question, why would we want to consume dairy? Well, at least from this significant amount of observational literature, I don't think a lot of interventional studies have actually been done here other than natural experiments, looking at the health of people like the Maasai in Africa or indigenous people who consume dairy and they tend to be extremely lean and quite healthy, just look at photos of them. But in this case, it's another argument that the consumption of dairy appears to be beneficial from a metabolic health perspective, from an obesity perspective, from a cardiovascular disease perspective, perhaps because of the nutrients in dairy, perhaps because of a satiety effect promoted by the unique fats in dairy, the stearic acid, the saturated fats, transpalmitoleic acid, who knows, or perhaps the peptides in dairy, IGF-1, but there does appear to be a signal for a beneficial effect of dairy in the human diet. Here's another study looking at transpalmitoleic acid, a marker for dairy intake, metabolic risk factors, new onset diabetes in adults. Interestingly, this is also from Darius Mazafarian, and the conclusions were essentially the same. Circulating transpalmitoleate is associated with lower insulin resistance, presence of atherogenic dyslipidemia, which was lower, lower incident diabetes. So at least in these observational studies, and again, this really hasn't been studied in an interventional fashion in humans, it looks to be quite beneficial for humans, unique nutrients in these things that are beneficial for humans. With regard to cancer, you can look at articles like this, Dairy Products and Cancer, an article from the Journal of the American College of Nutrition. And just in the abstract, you can see that the World Cancer Research Fund and the American Institute for Cancer Research report concluded there was a probable association between milk intake and a lower risk of colorectal cancer and limited evidence of an association between milk intake and a lower risk of bladder cancer. There was a question of a signal regarding prostate cancer. That's probably a whole separate podcast. But when you actually really look at the evidence, there's not a strong association between dairy consumption and prostate cancer either in humans. They say since the 2007 report, several additional large cohort studies have been published, including two that show an inverse association between the intake of cultured dairy products and bladder cancer. So dairy and cancer doesn't appear to be an issue for humans either. And there are many summary papers like this one, Milk and Dairy Products, Good or Bad for Human Health, an assessment of the totality of the scientific evidence. Totality of the scientific evidence supports that intake of milk and dairy products contribute to meat nutritional recommendations, may protect against the most prevalent chronic diseases, whereas very few adverse effects have been reported. Specifically, they talk about reduced risk of type 2 diabetes, reduced risk of cardiovascular disease, particularly stroke. Furthermore, beneficial effect of milk and dairy intake on bone mineral density, no association risk with bone cancer, milk and dairy intake inversely associated with colorectal bladder, gastric cancer, and breast cancer. Gastric cancer is cancer of the stomach, not associated with the risk of pancreatic, ovarian, or lung cancer. 
While the evidence for prostate cancer risk was inconsistent, as I mentioned, that's a whole sort of thing to dive into. But when you really look at it, I'm not concerned about dairy and prostate at all. There's no association between milk and dairy products and increased all-cause mortality. And as the authors point out, cow's milk is vastly superior to plant-based milks. Perhaps I should have mentioned that in the beginning of the podcast. If you are drinking almond milk or oat milk, why are you doing that? 